In this video, we're going to create some simple circuits which implement dependent sources. As we saw in lecture and in the text, dependent sources can be categorized as either current sources or voltage sources. In either case, the source can be controlled by either a voltage or a current somewhere else in the circuit. Physically, dependent sources are commonly created using transistors. Two primary types of transistors are bipolar junction transistors, abbreviated as BJTs, and metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors, commonly called MOSFETs. We'll use both of these types of devices to create dependent sources in this tutorial. The first type of transistor we'll talk about is a MOSFET. This is a circuit schematic symbol of a MOSFET. MOSFETs are three terminal devices. The terminals are called the drain, the gate, and the source. Roughly speaking, the voltage applied between the gate and the source controls the amount of current coming through the drain, I sub D. Increasing the gate voltage allows more current going through the drain and out the source. Thus, the MOSFET is typically modeled as a voltage-controlled current source. The gate-to-source voltage is controlling the drain current. In general, there's a minimum gate voltage that must be exceeded before any current can pass from the drain to the source. This minimum voltage is called the threshold voltage. Once the threshold voltage is exceeded, the drain current increases with increasing gate voltage up to the point at which the maximum power which can be supplied at the drain is reached. Please note that the drain current is provided by some source external to this MOSFET. The transistor itself doesn't act as a source. This concept will become more clear when we do our demonstrations later on. This is a picture of the MOSFET that we'll be using in our demo. It's a ZVN2110A MOSFET. One side of the body of the MOSFET is flat. The other side is curved. This configuration allows you to identify the three leads. If you're looking at the curved side, the order of the pins are the drain, the gate, and the source. This is a schematic of the overall circuit we'll use to create our dependent source. We'll apply different voltage levels at the gate using the Analog Discovery's arbitrary waveform generator instrument. The waveform generator provides the capability of giving a variable voltage to a circuit. The quick start video relative to the WaveGen instrument provides some relevant background information about this tool. We also need a power source to provide the current into the drain, I sub D. We'll use one of the Analog Discovery's fixed 5 volt power supplies to do that. The 100 ohm resistor here simply limits the amount of current provided by the voltage supply. We'll measure the drain current with an ammeter here so that we can observe the behavior of the dependent source. In summary, the MOSFET, the 5 volt power supply, and the resistor all together constitute our dependent source. We'll measure the current provided by that dependent source with this ammeter, and we'll control this current with the gate to source voltage applied at the MOSFET. Now let's wire up our circuit. This is the circuit that we implemented. The MOSFETs here, these are the gate, the drain, and the source. We're using channel one of the AWG, the yellow wire, to apply the gate voltage. This is our 100 ohm current limiting resistor. We connected our ammeter between the 5 volt source, this red wire, and this terminal of the resistor. Now let's apply power to our circuit and see how it works. We have two separate power supplies applied to our circuit. The first one I'll apply is the 5 volt fixed power supply using the voltage instrument. Now we have to provide our variable voltage supply using the wave gen instrument. If we select a constant voltage, DC, currently our applied voltage is zero volts. I'll turn on the waveform generator. As you can see, with zero volts applied to the MOSFET's gate, we're getting essentially no current through the device. Increasing this voltage slowly using our slider bar, we'll get to the threshold voltage at about two volts or so, we start getting some current, 40 milliamps or so. Increasing this a little bit more, we'll increase that current slightly to maybe 50 milliamps. Now we're at about the maximum current that our power supply can provide. Continuing to increase that doesn't really increase the current anymore. 
So we've created a voltage controlled current source where the voltage applied by the arbitrary waveform generator changes the current passing through the drain of the MOSFET. That was one implementation of a dependent source. We created a circuit using a MOSFET, a power supply, and a resistor, which allowed us to create a current which was controlled by the gate voltage of the MOSFET. Now let's look at a similar circuit which uses a bipolar junction transistor, or BJT, to create a dependent source. This is a circuit schematic symbol of a BJT. BJTs, like MOSFETs, are three terminal devices. The terminals are called the collector, the base, and the emitter. Roughly speaking, the current flowing into the base, I sub B, controls the amount of current, I sub C, through the collector. This current goes through the collector and out the emitter. Increasing the base current tends to increase the collector current, and decreasing the base current reduces the collector current. Thus, the BJT is typically modeled as a current-controlled current source. Although the BJT is commonly modeled as a current-controlled current source, increasing the base voltage tends to also increase the base current. Thus, we can also use the BJT to implement a voltage-controlled current source where the collector current is controlled by the base voltage. As with the MOSFET, the collector current must be supplied by an external source. The BJT itself doesn't create the collector current. It only controls it. This is the BJT we'll be using in our demonstration. It is a 2N3904 BJT. One side of the body of the BJT is curved, the other side is flat. If you're facing the flat side, the pins are, from left to right, the emitter, the base, and the collector. This is the physical 2N3904 BJT. The pins are, as previously mentioned, the emitter, the base, and the collector. This is the schematic of the overall circuit we'll use to create our second dependent source. It's very similar to the circuit we used last time to implement our MOSFET-based dependent source. Essentially, we've just replaced the MOSFET with a BJT. The BJT base voltage is going to be applied with the waveform generator. The V plus voltage supply is going to be used to provide the collector current. And there is still a 100 ohm resistor used to limit the current. We'll measure the current with an ammeter as before. Here's our implemented circuit. The BJT is here. These terminals are the base, the collector, and the emitter. This is our 100 ohm current limiting resistor. We're connecting our power supply, the red wire from the analog discovery, to this terminal of the resistor through our ammeter, going here into the ampere port, coming out here from the COM port. We're applying a base voltage with our yellow wire, the AWG channel. Now let's take a look at the response of the current through this resistor as we change our base voltage. I've already applied power to the circuit, so we've got our 5 volts applied to the collector. We've currently got 0 volts applied to the base. If I increase that gradually, we're still getting 0 amps displayed on the DMM up until the point where we get to, oh, maybe 700 millivolts applied to the base, we're starting to flow some current through the collector. Increasing the base voltage more results in more and more current going through the collector until finally we reach the maximum power which can be provided by the source, which is about 50 milliamps. Increasing the base voltage further at that point results in no change in the current through the DMM. In this video, we implemented two dependent sources. Both of them used transistors to perform their functions. One used a MOSFET, while the other used a BJT. The basic idea, however, is simply to show a physical implementation of dependent sources. We'll create more dependent sources later in the course when we introduce operational amplifiers.